Yeah? That looks sick. Yeah? Yeah. Mm, that looks... That's mm. tough. That's like the finishing touch. Mm. I think Ashton chose the FJ45. That, look, they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? We've, we've built a lot of really badass land cruisers over the years here at Patriot. And when, um, when COVID actually hit, we were looking for a project. So the boys and I found a, an old FJ45. You guys have seen it throughout the series, the, um, the COVID FJ. Now he was kind of tossing up which car he was going to get. And that was definitely at the top of his list. But I don't think he was completely sold on an FJ45 until the FJ uh, the COVID FJ turned up on the set. So about a week before I did purchase this thing, Dad did buy his first FJ45. It was this real clean, real tidy 2F car. And like, and like, it was cool. And yeah, like I just liked it. But the next week on just like a lazy sh Saturday. Uh, one Saturday morning, we found it on Gumtree and it was local. Here on the Gold Coast, we had nothing on. We went out to, to take a look at it. Like, I had no idea what car I wanted, nor was I experienced with cars at the time because I was only 16. So I was more excited about just the idea of owning eight and cars. So when I saw this thing, I became real, just like excited about the fact of me owning a car. So we bought it that day and I drove it home. You! You own a car, Daddy. You own a car. You believe that? It's a surreal moment for me when your children, your little babies, grow up and I guess they've become men. So Ashton getting his first car, what else was it going to be? Of course it was going to be a four-wheel drive and um, Dad and him actually went out and they went out for the day just to look at cars as you do. And what happened? He came home with this baby. Didn't look like this though. Um, and yeah, I, I really couldn't see the vision on this one. So um, seeing it now is really, really special. So I was thinking, what is Ashton doing buying this old crap car that has no power, no flex, and at the time was pretty much a bucket of not a lot. So yeah, I didn't really expect him to actually go through and buy the car. We saw this 45 and it was by far the cleanest original 45 I've ever seen and on the spot, Ashton bought it and, um, and drove it home. And then obviously because, because I owned an FJ40, I did the research and I watched all the YouTube videos and saw how, how much of a nostalgic piece of like history these cars are. I began to more so appreciate what the car was and, and how this car has pretty much built the whole entire country. These have now, over the past two or so years, become my favorite car of all time. They are just badass and cool, so. I think there's a lot of pivotal moments, um, you know, that, that someone has in their life. But for, for a, a petrol head like Ashton and, and Christian are, I think that that moment of buying their first car is going to be at the top of their, their list for the rest of their life. I don't think that there's a, a boy that ever forgets his first car. It's like your first girlfriend, right, or your first love. Um, and seeing him on that trip out to Gordon Country, him and Christian, you know, taking ownership of their, their own car the f and the first vehicle in the family. It was just, um, it, was un it was an unbelievable weekend and one that I'll, I'll never forget. Driving the car and taking it off-road for the first time as a NA2F uh, car, it had no power, it barely got off Cunningham's gap, but we made it in there with, and I think I was more hot and than the engine, honestly. Like, it was very sweaty, so. But it was cool because, like, you know, I was in love with this thing. It's my first car, like, so I was just absolutely enjoying every single moment I got to 
drive that in the car. When I was in the FJ with Ashton, no tinted windows, an old car, no AC, the middle of summer, it was absolutely boiling. I only really thought about that after the fact though. When I was in the car with him, that was the last thing on my mind. But I wasn't thinking about any of that at the time. I was just thinking, I'm rolling with my boy. It was actually really surprising at Gordon Country that first weekend, just how capable that FJ45 was. You know, you're talking a 50 year old vehicle, but this is why the FJ is known as the car that built Australia, you know. This is what the Land Cruiser was developed to do, it was developed to work. Taking it off-road, just how it was, it went to show, like, why these cars are so famous, because it, it didn't have any lockers, or no big tyres, like, no power, no mods at all, but it just dominated and went everywhere it had to go, so I was very impressed. You know, we go back to that that track where the black truck went up and, and you know, the black truck kind of struggled. It's a big, heavy car. And well, I thought on that day, there's no way this, this little 45 with this 2F and, you know, being 50 years old was going to make it up that hill. And, you know, the twins, look, they just drove the wheels off the thing and it went everywhere that the black truck went. But I, I guess that's where, you know, the car was never going to be left alone, right? It's a Patriot vehicle. It was never going to be a car that was ever going to be left untouched. But that's when the thought process started going through my mind and the twins' mind, look, if we're really going to enjoy this, if we're going to do with this 45 what Patriot Games does best, we're going to have to turn this into something extremely capable and more importantly, something very reliable. And that weekend was where the 1VD concept was, um, was launched to create the FJ49. I had zero faith in Ashton getting the little FJ through that bog hole. I knew that I could do it with tyres, power, and all that good stuff, but there was no hope for Ashton. But he just turned his car into a sub, skin, it's deep. I just loved it. I love it. Ashton gets to the bog hole, all excited, and what happened? He broke it. He broke it. Of course he did, in true Patriot style. <laughs> I was very determined to show all the people around me just just how capable this little car was. Um, little did I know it would be going home on a tow truck the next day. All right, so me being experienced and not knowing what was going on um, with a car with no snorkel and a airbox that probably didn't seal too well. I just kept on like driving it and just seeing how far I could go because I really wanted to go as far as the bit like truck and shifting in and out of first and reverse like all the time. Um, yeah, it it ate a little bit of water and the clutch decided it didn't want to work anymore. So it didn't come out too good. The clutch is full of mud and just doesn't work like I just chuck it in first and I can just let, let the clutch out. Well after the, the mud punching episode with Ashton and you know obviously no snorkel, standard car, petrol motor, all the rest of it um, and the car was put on a tow truck that weekend to go back home that's when um, that's when it really, that's when it got real. That's when the discussion really came to life and, and I was prepared to support the kid and, and turn it into something that was gonna be a lot more capable. I wonder if, if he didn't do that bog hole and he didn't get stuck and he didn't almost ruin the car and get towed home, do you think they would have gone to this extent? I don't know, probably not. Probably not. I feel like they had to rip it all back, start again anyway, and of course, boys being boys, they just get excited. How is he? He'd come home, he's like, I want to do this, I want to do that. Yeah. Always talking to you about it. And now we're finally at the end. The original concept for the FJ, uh, for the FJ45 at that time. <laughs> um, 
So every build here, it always starts off with a baseline plan. Well, there's probably a little bit more involved in it than what they thought at the start, I'm thinking. I mean, was to put a 1V day in it, throw some 79 axles underneath it, and that was it. That, that's what we were planning on doing. And then we get excited along the way and things evolve into the final build. Uh, I mean, I knew what the build was. We were going to stick, you know, the 79 driveline into the FJ, make it nice, clean, make it reliable, make it the, the new vehicle with the old school body. In true fashion, it just escalated and got really out of control really, really quickly. I think the original OG plan was just chuck the dirty old V8 motor in there, but there was issues with the width of the engine to fit in the chassis, and then they've coiled the front, which is a work of art in itself, and then... From there we got excited, it was like bar work, it was like suspension work, it was custom fuel tanks, it was custom floors, it was air conditioning, the whole interior, all the red arc stuff, like it just got, and then the paint. Yeah, it's basically not just a motor swap, it's like motor, chassis, drive line, the whole show. And because on a 40 they're pretty small on the front, like to get all that stuff fitted under the bonnet, like, you know, you got to pat the engineers on the back a bit for that, like it was cosy, but it all works, so. Like, it is going to a long way, but what it turned out to be, man, it's spectacular. So my th thoughts are with the FJ after that weekend. We wanted to, to take the, the old FJ, a car that everyone loves, and it's, and it's small, it's little, it's light, um, and mix it with one of the most reliable and most used engines around the world, which is the 1BD out of the Chevrolet series. The first step to get the build going was to just buy a donut car to give us the motor, the box and the diffs. Would I choose the donut car that we did? When we got it here, there was actually, we actually found out it had been rolled over and on its side for a while. I had it started, believe it or not, I did have actually have that, that motor started before the build actually commenced. So I knew the engine run. We bought that mine spec vehicle, you know, I was trying to do this on a budget and really you know, to do it on the budget, could I have afforded to buy something a little bit better for him? Yeah, 100% I could have, but the reality is that I wanted him, even at that level, with what we were planning on doing at that time, I wanted him to really understand the value of hard work. I really wanted him to know what, you know, what it takes when things go wrong, you know. Ex-mining car, well, look, everyone knows ex-mining cars, they've been tr thrashed, treated like shit. Um, but you, you take a gamble. It's a gamble on any car you're going to get. You don't know if the engine runs, you don't know how long everything's going to last, what they've done to it. There are so many unknowns, you don't know. But the learning experience that Ashton and me got out of re rebuilding and touching every single nut and bolt on both of the cars is something that you just don't learn without just getting your hands dirty. A lot of people t take the easy way out and can do a sh sh chassis swap armor with these old cars with like an 80 series sh sh chassis and things like that. Um, I personally think, think it takes the car from being a 45 with this type of running gear to, to that car with the 45 body on top of it. So I didn't want to lose the original sh chassis, so we decided to fit the whole 79 series running gear into the 45 series chassis. He's been very adamant from day one, you know, we had the conversation very early in the piece of when we got that, that 79 series cruiser in here, look, let's just pull the cab off, let's do this the easy way. He knew in his heart that it wouldn't be a 45 series anymore. It wouldn't be the original 1977 Land Cruiser that he bought, you know. We're just going for a little cruise, I guess. Everyone's asked that, eh? Why didn't you just take the 45 body and put it on the 79 chassis or an 80 chassis? It's like, you got to maintain as much of the 45 as you can, and the chassis, that's its soul. You can't take that away. You can add bits and pieces to it, but you can't take it soul away. So it had to stay on the 45 chassis. So when the engine and gearbox came out, we 
scanned the whole thing and was able to put that in CAD and then we also scanned the car and then Jack worked his magic and the motor honestly just went right in. So to fit the 79 driveline into the 45 chassis was probably the challenging bit. You've got to take that really, really wide V8 motor and then stick it in that really, really little skinny chassis. But I mean, a couple of little tricks and secrets going on in there, but it's in and it's working. There's a VJ in the 45 in here, Doug. Are you kidding or what? There is no comparison whatsoever to the complexity of this build to anything that I've ever attempted in my life. I mean, this one compared to all the other builds, like this one just had everything was custom. We've never done it this custom before. I mean, every little thing was just a custom solution. There was a custom bracket, there was a custom fitment, there was custom made parts, like, you know, we've never done it that far before. This one, it was just custom, everything from start to the finish. It was different in the way that the Black Truck and Megatura, there was a lot of the stuff already made for those trucks and they're on the market. The 49, that was, it was all made in house. Jack designed a lot of it. So it was complicated in a way that we couldn't just run down the road or talk to someone. It was, let's do it here and we'll see how we go. Oh, it's the car, like it's a one off. Like the things that people will see it from the outside and go, oh yeah, it's just basically, they've put the coil front in under it and bang the motor in, but like, if you get under the car and whatever, you'll see how much, like nearly every part of that OG car is like got custom stuff on it. Coil converting the front was the only thing that was going to turn this into a modern day vehicle. You know, if we left Leafs in the front, um, then you have all the associated problems with, with leaf springs and the biggest one being comfort really for Ashton for those long touring trips, but also the, the ability to flex that front end. The coil conversion in the rear, it really came down to budget. There's a lot of added cost to do a coil conversion in the, in the rear. I know looking back at it now, yes, we went overboard in a lot of instances and we could have done this a completely different way. Um, but I really wanted to give him something to look forward to in the future. I didn't want him to jump in the car and the car's done and it's going to, you know, the, the novelty wear off quickly. So there's still a lot of opportunity for Ashton to customise this into the future and keep building on the base platform that I think um, that, that, that we've really nailed for the fundamentals on what the FJ49 had to have. Yeah, it's going to, like, put it this way, it'll scare an everyday person off doing that to a stando. 45 chassis, like, they just, I don't think anyone else would have ever tried it. Unless you're someone who's attempted a build like this, you don't know how much is involved, and when you get down to the nitty gritty of it, it's just... The amount of skills that we have learned from the people here at Patriot is insane. Learning just general mechanics, from everyone that has been in the Eaton Shed giving us a aid in hand, it's insane and we could not be better off anywhere else. Yeah, the motor was in and we had to fit all, make all the mounts and everything for the radiator and inner cooler and all that on the front. We started that and got everything sort of dummied up so it would run. Um, getting in the factory inner cooler and the factory radiator was always going to be a struggle just because of the sheer size of them. So we, we lent on PWR to come up with a concept of a intercooler and radiator with a thermo so we could get rid of the standard engine fan. And that means that we could fit um, you know, the whole package of the 1VD and the cooling system inside of the 45 engine bay without really heavily modifying um, the inner guards. Dad always says it's not what you know, it's who you know. And with the people and connections Dad has, we have been able to do a lot of cool things and learn a lot of cool things things. There isn't one moment where there was the best. There's kind of a bunch throughout the build. Like the first time that the engine, I was in the, the engine bay, oh, that was a big tick. And then there's, and then there's of course the whole build up on that night of getting the, the engine actually fired up. It wasn't going, it wasn't going, like all hope was lost. And then just one plug had to go in and boom, it fired right up. So that was a big moment.
get it running, the, the time it took, the electric, electrical, the drive line, uh, GSL, just to hear it start up, to see Ashton's face just, he wanted to start it. I think he started it about 10 times that day. Just every time, just he started it and started it and started it. Um, it's a good feeling to know that it, it ran. Um, let's, let's see how far it goes. Big success, I reckon, the look on um, Ashton's face and when he went over and baked that skid next door. Obviously, doing, doing my first burnout in the car that I've built and has took me ages to do, that was a big tick. Something like the last point where it big fireball at the end, that was just on point. Nothing like chucking a good skid for a young fella. Working with the twins, what an experience, right? Um, it's good, it's got as good and as bad. Um, I've known them now for five years. It can be challenging, but in saying that, like they do, if you can get them off their phones, and get them listening and you know hands on. They they they're good. They take it in and um. They've sort of always been around the cars, making them, building them, getting their hands dirty. Entertaining, absolutely entertaining. They're just bouncing off each other all the time. As they've grown up, you know, the hands don't really want to get much more dirtier. They don't want to touch the grease. But he put in the effort. He put in the long hours. He listened when he had to. I thought there were times when. He was going to pull the pin because it just, it seemed like it was never going to end. We we're never going to get it on the road. The boys are really lucky on being able to do this build. What they've gone through from a full tear down to this final stage, they have learnt so much. So many people can't go through that. What they have actually done, it blows my mind. Most rewarding part, seeing the twins learn everything, like being able to teach them what we know, man, that's definitely the most rewarding part. Teaching the twins like stuff, like um, it was good from the start to where they are now, like that they are good. Like it was, it was very rewarding, like teaching like my old school stuff to the boys and watching them pick it up. And for someone that wants to come into a trade, which is hard nowadays to get kids to do trade, but at the end of it, if they'll stick it out, they'll turn into good kids. Like the boys are coming of age, they're learning new skills. Handing on the knowledge that was given to me, is, it's always rewarding. So yeah, when we did the Mega Six, they were real young kids then. I mean, we gave them an angle grinder and I think Steve was pretty nervous handing them an angle grinder when we did that, but now you can just, you can sort of explain what you need out of them and they, they go to town, man. They're all over it now. They're so well experienced. This car, the build, they've learnt so much and I wonder if they're going to do another one. What do you reckon? I don't know. I don't know. Do you want them to? Or do you miss them because they were never home? I want them to. And like, man, after that, I'm sure they got anything covered, eh? So working with all those boys over the past 18 months, they have become more than just the work as a patriot for us. They have become really, really good mates of ours who could not do enough for us and we could not thank them enough. To see the team, you know, Jack, Harrison, Steve, Pedro, and everybody behind the scenes that you don't see on camera, the, the spring back in everybody's step now that the FJ's completed, that everybody has a sense of accomplishment that, you know, collaboratively, we did this. Yeah, it's Ashton's car, but everybody has got their own stamp on this vehicle. Bar work was a, was, Look, that was one of those things that kind of really got out of control, but it was, the bar work was a necessity for the front end. Because of the offset of the 79 uh, diffs, or the, uh, the actual track width, I should say, um, the only way that we could get that track width under the front end was to extend the front guards. So at the time when we didn't really know that we were gonna take this car to the, to the level of build that we did, it was more about Ashton having the ability to go and wheel this thing with his mates, go and tip it in on ruts and, you know, scrub past trees and all the rest of it without damaging that perfect FJ45 body. 
And that's where the bar work kind of came from. Now, you know, the skill sets that we use, Pedro is a master, master fabricator. He's, look, he's honestly probably the best I've ever seen. The utilisation of those skills and, and, you know, we coupled that up with the technology that we had through scanning and um, obviously the, the uh, computer aided drafting that you would have seen right throughout the episodes and the bar work on this thing is just, it's, it's next level, but it's not there just, just for looks, it's there to protect the vehicle, but that kind of flowed on a little bit as well. You know, the XA cage bar work, again, we had the ability and the capacity to do it, and, and that was really installed for Ashton safety. You know, you see one of these things in an accident, they are literally a Coke can, they squash like a Coke can. So I wanted to ensure that my son was gonna be safe, and um, that's, that's where that kind of escalated as well. We did all the bar work to help the twins on the bar work around the sides, give them a few old school lessons on notching and stuff. So Pedro has taught me a lot about fabrication. Uh, first and foremost, a lot about four wheel driving and, and also a lot about how to appreciate patrols are just a little bit more than what I used to. But um, I mean, the whole aim of the game was this, is to impart knowledge on them and what they learned from, I think, myself, Harrison, Pedro, Steve. I mean, those, after a year and a half to two years on this, those kids are just like way, way, way ahead of where anyone else would be. And when it came to the job, it was um, it was back and forth. Look, realistically, there was never an intention from the start to paint that that cab. There was, we were never going to paint that body. It was going to be a sad day afternoon. We were going to put a clear coat over it. That was the plan, just to protect it from rusting out anymore, because that was Ashton's favourite part of this car, and it was my favourite part of the car as well. But once we'd gone to the level of re-powder coating the frame, powder coating all the bar work, and everything was starting to come back together out of necessity, you know, the surface rust that was on the axles and all the rest of it. From the start, we weren't planning on doing any of that, but again, we have the facilities to build it to that next level, so why not utilise them and, and build this thing into something that was gonna last, that he wasn't gonna have to tear it down again in 12 or 18 months. So once we started reassembling the car, it was like, okay, well look, maybe we shouldn't clear coat it here, but I know a guy who can do a really good job on it. And that's where Nathan from Live and Loco came into it. So originally I wanted the car to be all brand new on the bodywork side of things, but working alongside the car I for those couple of years, I fell in love with the way it just looked like an old farm truck because, because that's what it was like at heart. So I didn't want to take that away from the car. So I said I just wanted it clear coated and the boys at Living Low Code did not take that for an answer so they they did end up repainting the whole car just like how you see it now and I could not be happier with the end result. And to be honest I don't really know how it came across in the episodes that everybody saw. We had no idea he was going to take this thing to the level that he did. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Come up front to the Go up there. Bruh, are you serious or what? I didn't think you were, I thought you were painting today. I didn't, Ashton didn't. Nobody who was involved really knew the level that Nathan was going to take it to. But once Nathan started digging deep, and this is, this is what comes about when you're dealing with the people that, that, that we only deal with. We only deal with the best. We only associate with the best. And Nathan really wanted to showcase to the world, I suppose, what he was capable of doing. And this was the perfect canvas for him. Once we replaced that floor and he painted the interior and the interior came up to the standard that it came up, I don't think we could have stopped him. Even if we knew and we wanted to stop him, there is no way we could have stopped that guy. He's an artist. You know, I still find myself every time I look at it, I'm, I'm staring at it and I'm moving around the car and 
it has kept the old personality of the car. It is keeping it looking like a old farm truck, but underneath in the engine bay and in the interior is brand new, exactly how I did want it. The paint job is perfect, and most of all, it is very, very uh, unique. I just, I can't fathom or understand how those guys' brains work to create a piece of artwork on a car lot they did. So I'm glad that they took it there. I, I really am glad they took it there, but once again, we, we never anticipated from the start that we were gonna do a build to this level, but we do what Patriot does best and you know, nothing exceeds like success. Even if you didn't know what this car was or wasn't a car person, just seeing you know, this old, like what it seems, like rust bucket are coming down the road, you would look twice. So it's a very eye-catching paint job and it's exactly you know, what I did want to come out of it. The electronics package in the FJ49 is something that, that personally I'm, I'm probably one of the most proud of, you know? I just came off the back of another personal project that I did for me with a boat and we put about 20 toggle switches and wired them how wiring has been done for a hundred years. We wired in toggle switches and rear lasers and fuses and that was like a four or a five day project. And it, and it just so happened that, you know, as we were going through that project, the FJ49 was starting to get, get him ready to wire. And I said to Ashton, I said, Ashton, why don't we put Red Vision in the FJ49 and control everything off the Red Vision? Now Ashton obviously being the son of the owner of, of Patriot Campers, it was just instant click. Hell yeah, why don't we do that? We'll mount it right in the middle of the dash. And that's where that idea come from. You know, like most of ideas, it comes out of simplicity, it comes out of knowledge, and it comes out of, you know, that desire to innovate in the industry. So that's how that project came about. And we kick off that project, and I think that's, that's one of the things that I'm most proud of in this build, you know? And I know the team at Red Ark are proud of us as well. When I sent down the photos to those guys, to the team down in Adelaide, and said, hey, look, look, look at what we just did, you know, the response from those guys was overwhelming, you know? I think that there's a, there's a massive market for a product like the Red Vision in the custom car industry, or even vehicles in, in, uh, in general, you know? Everybody's concentrating on them on towable vehicles and back of canopies and all the rest of it but that little unit in there has the ability to do so much more and it's, and it's really modernised this interior. That is absolutely insane. One of the things I was really looking forward to was seeing what Ashton would do with the interior. When it came to trimming the interior, um, there was only ever one guy from the start that I really wanted to do this and that was Kerry. You know, you saw Kerry through the episodes. Kerry's been trimming, I think there were dinosaurs probably walking around on the earth when Kerry started trimming. You know, the guy, he's, he's just, he's a master. He's a, he's, a, he's a master craftsman. So again, Ashton was really adamant that he wanted a retro feel. He didn't want modern day seats. He wanted the FJ seats. And that, that's fitted in with the theme of the entire build. So when we took the car down to Kerry and, and ran him through, you know, Ashton ran him through exactly what he wanted to do, I don't think there was a lot of discussion right throughout that process. Kerry, he just immediately got it, you know. We needed to build some, some bolsters into that seat for him to have the ability to go forward driving without sliding across into the passenger or, or vice versa. And it was all about keeping it clean, keeping it feeling like a 1977 car. But the addition of some, you know, some texture into the hood lining, the suede, um, Ashton's, um, Ashton's Starlights, it's something that he wanted, I think, even before he bought the FJ, he was like, one day I'm gonna build a car that's got stars in the roof, you know? So he got exactly what he wanted. I think Justin kind of did let him be a bit free with this one, and he did get a bit creative with the stars in the roof, and it's definitely got that Ashton touch, but still that beautiful leather and that finished look. Kerry building in that, you know, that nice textile, uh, over centre console to mount the GME radio. So once again, you've got a, that retro kind of look with the console, but then you add these modern elements in, uh, like a GME XRS, you know, a GPS operated um, UHF, and then the addition of the stars into the roof. Um, the Nardi steering wheel, you know, perfect, perfect fitment, you know, modern day leather with that, with that 1980s, you know, the Nardis, I remember back in my drifting days in, you know, the late 90s, you know, that three-spoke Nardi wheel, that was like, mate, if you were legit about drifting, you ran an old-school Nardi steering wheel. So, I 
I think everything that has gone into that interior, it is the perfect mix of modern day features without losing the soul of the FJ45. When Ashton started with this car, he had his vision and he hasn't really changed it. He's kind of been on the same path the whole way through, which is really cool. I did think that he was going to do the P-Core tray, put all the P-Core bits on it, but he really did keep it original. This, the factory tub, the factory Toyota tub. So we're going to whip that off and put a P-Core one on. No, everyone is expecting like that I would, but I'm... I like tubs, I don't know why, I just always have. I really wanted to build a P-Core tray for him, you know? I really wanted to put a P-Core tray onto an FJ45, and that was where I was heading with the project right at the start, and that's that, it excited me. But Ash sticking to his guns like he has the whole way through, it was just a hell no, Dad. This is my car, and I'm not putting a P-Core tray onto an FJ45. I want one with the style side tub. And, um, you know, what a vision right from the start, because this car would not be what this car is with a modern day trailer. But in, in the back of the tub, you know, we've left it intentionally really, really clean. You saw the episodes where I've remade the floor, you know, so he's got the ability to throw his dirt bike in the back um, and throw all of his gear in the back without having to worry about it rusting through or, you know, something something falling out from the middle of the tub. Um, but we put in there the Anderson plug um, for his Dometic fridge. So I think for now you'll see him just rolling around with his um, Dometic fridge in the back, possibly his dirt bike and the swag. Um, and that's all he's gonna need. But again, that gives him the opportunity to really understand what his style is and how he wants to camp because to my horror, none of my boys want to tow. They don't want to tow anything, you know? They want their cars to be self-contained so they can keep up with their boys when it, uh, when it comes to wheeling. So the Dometic fridge will stay in the back there for now. That'll, that's a staple item in there and then you may see in the future um, Ashton's fit out for the rear tub. So what do you think? Do you like it better with the tub the way it is, kind of original, or do you wish you went a bit more modern? Ever since he brought it home, I've definitely been in love with the pub. I love yeah, it. we definitely have. Wheel and tyre choice. Look, from the start, you know, the Pecor rims was... Uh, I don't think you had much of a choice there, to be perfectly honest with you. The thing had to be rolling on Pecor rims. Going back to BF Goodrich, which is um, really where I started again, is coming with the relationship of Bob Jane T-Marts. You know, we're not tied to any single tyre brand now. Um, we have a full range of tyres that we're going to be testing across the upcoming uh, seasons of, of Patriot Games. So again, there goes that, you know, that affiliation and that, that real world testing that we can hand down to our, um, down to our products. commitment that GSL have made um, to this build. These builds don't happen without commitment uh, from people like that. Those guys behind the scenes from day one, it's all of the technical advice, all of the parts that we were missing. You saw bits of it when we went up there and you know, Ashton's gearbox were a little bit sus on it. They had a you know, gearbox sitting out the back that I don't even know what those boxes are worth. Yeah boys, take that. If you need it, take it. Let's go to the old shop, let's go get a block, let's go grab these parts. But it was almost a daily event that something was turning up here from GSL. Mate, have you got this switch? Have you got that switch? If Scotty or Luke didn't have it, they went and got it. So when you saw in that final episode that, um, that the build finished at GSL, that's where it had to finish. That's, that's the FJ49 second home as far as I'm concerned, you know. The tune went um, really well. I, um, I actually called it, you know. I, I called it the night before. I said, mate, this, this car's making about 120 odd horsepower put on the dyno, 125 horsepower. Scotty figured out straight away it was in limp mode. Straight onto that, got the car to the 200 horsepower mark, which is where a standard 1V day, or a lightly tuned 1V day really should be. It goes good, eh? So the reality is it probably goes very similar to a standard uh, 79 series with a light tune, but it's enough power um, for Ashton. It's, a, it's, it's enough for what he needs. Uh, that 200 horsepower, with the Harrop A-Lockers, this thing's gonna go absolutely everywhere that he needs it to go. Harrop's another brand that, um, you know, again, no questions asked when Patriot says we're building something. The team at Harrop are, are right behind us and to those guys, um, thank you very much.
Um, the decision to unveil the, the 49 at the Brisbane 4x4 happened three weeks prior to the Brisbane 4x4. Look, we had actually planned a big open day at Patriot HQ and we, we really wanted to make a big bang at Patriot HQ and uh, we scheduled something in um, for about a month prior to the Brisbane 4x4 and it got really close to that date and we actually had to cancel that open day because the car wasn't finished. It is always really good to have a set date of when the car does have to be done for a certain thing. So, so having the 4x4 show coming up, it just like motivated me to just get the thing absolutely done and finish them. Now, it's funny how, you know, it's the sliding doors theory in life, is it not? You know, one door opens, another one closes. It had to be the Brisbane 4x4. It was like, now I look back at that event, um, the choice wasn't made by me, it was made for me to launch that car at the Brisbane 4x4. People have to have a scoreboard. There's got to be a goalpost at the end of any project and anything that you do in life, I think. I think when you put a stake in the ground and, and say, I have to complete this by this date, then naturally that is just what, what happens. That event was like, um, I couldn't imagine that it could have gone off any better. Driving up to the Brisbane 4x4, I'm in the big ram, Ashton's sitting beside me, FJ is on the back, the trailer's on the back, and I've got this grin from ear to ear because I've just got these consistent flashbacks of the day that I drove the black truck to the Brisbane 4x4 show, you know? This, that was a pivotal moment in my career, and to think, you know, at my age, that still stands out. You've got to remember, these kids started building this car when they were 16 years old. They are 17 years old, and I knew, I knew on that day that we were bumping in that they were going to stop the Brisbane 4x4 show with, you know, this, this car that they've just built, the FJ49 that they've just built. If they can get that same feeling that I had with the black truck at SEMA, um, with the possibility of, of may, maybe taking the FJ49 over to SEMA this year, um, there's a few conversations that are being had. Um, I would love my boys to have the opportunity to, um, to get that, that recognition. On, uh, on the biggest world uh, stage when it comes to, to custom vehicle building. We were not expecting anywhere close to the crowd that actually showed up. We didn't know that so many people were actually going to make their way out to the 4x4 show and come by to to watch a 45 series that two teenagers built like it was just insane we are so so thankful for everyone that that did came out it was definitely the best day of my life how we going everyone who's keen to see the 49 oh like i am so pumped this is like Oh, I've been working for over the past like year and a half, so oh, yeah. I'm so keen. Just like Ashton, I'm also very, very keen to just let everyone see this. It's been a been a lot of work, so we are very, very keen to let it show. But that day up there at the 4x4 show was, um, it was intense. The crowd that came out to see, I mean, obviously we follow the, we follow the YouTube views and we know the reaction and you kind of feel sometimes, you know, the impact that you're making in the industry or the impact that you're making on the younger followers and, you know, the aspirational piece of what we do at Patriot Games. That's why we didn't change the sh chassis and it keeps it OG, it keeps it original and yeah, it looks cool. Well, the unveiling of the FJ was everything I could have hoped and dreamed for. There was a lot of people in there and everyone just absolutely adored the thing, so. It was, it was surreal. Like, that's the only real word for it. And I don't think it was all about the car. I really don't think it was all about the car. The relationship 
um, that we've shown throughout this build series that I have with the boys. That's been the number one comment that I've got from everybody that I've spoken to. I didn't expect that many people to be there to see the launch of Ashton's car. It was really cool. For him to see everyone's face and get all of those accolades and be able to really take it in. I mean, so to be able to show the world, show everyone and everyone be so happy with it and telling him it's the best car, uh, standing back and just seeing that grin on his face, that was definitely a highlight for me. Just like say, uh, thanks like for everyone for the support and the nice comments and coming down here. Yeah, um, yeah, like just thank you and, and yeah, I just thank you to this man right here. <laughs> the number one success of the build. The highlight of the build for me, by, by a country mile, you know, you've seen everything that we've success, uh, succeeded on this build, you've seen all the fails, um, was Ashton's speech. Fuck those two in front of, up in front of 2,000 people. Like as a, um, you know, as a parent, and I know Sarah felt exactly the same way, you know, that the, the emotion that we had after that day of, of seeing our boys, you know, at 17 years old in front of that crowd, um, delivering what they delivered, you know, that would scare the shit out of the people at the best of times, you know. When Ashton, um, when Ashton started tearing up, you know, towards the end of that speech, that was just, that was the moment when, that was the moment when I, I knew that this was right. Everything about this build was right. There was no, there was nothing that could have taken the pride away from me. Still today, you know, and that, that event was a week ago. I would say mum and dad are very proud of both of us because we got this thing done and we did what we said that we were going to to do. Most of all, they were just happy seeing me and Christian are just hanging out as brothers, are not fighting, are just spending time together. Who wants to see the FJ49? Come on, let's go! Seriously? Who wants to see the FJ49? Come on, let's Roll go! Roll the covers off, boys! that after all of this work or that everyone has put in to getting this car done, it was, it was all worth it and everyone just did fall in love with the thing and there was not one bad comment about it. I mean, I mean, how can you hate this thing? Let's be honest. Dude, unreal job these boys. I've seen it from day one and um, hats off to them, mate. They built a car way better than I did when I was their age, so super stoked for them. Maybe I'm too close to a project a lot of the time and I don't appreciate it like it would be from someone who hasn't seen it. I think I gained a whole new appreciation with the crowd as well because everyone's seen it like finished for the first time. You know, I always see it as a, I've got to do this, I've got to sort that, we've got to figure out that, I need to get that, I need to engineer that. And then at the end, it's just like relaxing. You just get to sit there and admire it. And man, I could just sit there admiring that vehicle all day long. You know, I remember seeing those two boys, school holidays, sweeping the floor. Justin's in them, get the floor swept, pick up the rubbish, and you know what? These guys, they want to get in and, and build stuff and, and, and make it work. So uh, we were really grateful to um, be able to be part of it and help them out and um, get them on the track to where they are. And, and I think um, all the best to them and just keep building more trucks. She's a work of art, there's no doubt about it. You've got to come and see this rig, it's pretty special. Mate, that FJ49 series is unlike anything I've just about ever seen before. The crowd that was there for the unveiling, the reaction on the twins' faces, I tell you what, it's a, it's a memory I want to freeze in my mind forever. It was intense. That thing is out of control. Jealousy uh, is, is, is a word that doesn't quite sum up uh, how I'm feeling. I definitely am very jealous of the boys, but yeah, well done boys. You've absolutely smashed it. It's a beast. Having some of the industry's biggest names come up to us and say that they love the car that we have built, 
that was a really surreal moment for both Ashton and me that that people and really really big names have been following the little FJ that we've built. I think when I see this thing out on its first trip I'm probably going to shed a tear to be honest. It's been a long journey to get here and obviously this is the biggest passion project we've ever done. The full drive of me is saying let's go to Genoa and let's go to Land Cruiser, let's find the, the worst tracks possible, let's see how this thing bloody goes. I still want to see him, I want to see him tour it, four wheel drive it, get it in the tricky positions, get the winch out, learn how to winch, experience everything that we've done for him, for that FJ, and just use it, 100% use every part of that truck. I've got to wonder, now with his own car, is he going to venture out with his mates? I mean, his mates have been waiting for this build as well. I can see every weekend, every waking moment that he's not a trade, um, getting out there, getting off the beaten track and hopefully we'll be invited sometimes. I think that they'd secretly be happy to do this all over again. I 100% <laughs> agree. <laughs> I would have to say Dad has shown over the episodes, like I would say how much of a ideal father figure. Don't cry. It's okay. I love you, you don't need to say it. Yeah? Oh no. <laughs> oh God! Don't, 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 don't have to say. Why not? I oh. can't say it. <laughs> I don't look at this build as an expense. This build is a major investment. I'm investing into them to have the skill sets of all of the people that are around them. You know have the exposure um, to all of these different skills that you've that everybody's seen them learn right throughout the build. I'd, I would give the kids the world if I could. And um, if that means them having one of the most badass trucks in the country, um, well then I feel like I've succeeded as a parent.